check out vpntierless.com and my merch store to buy my merch. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out Hydster VPN. Now this VPN is not as well known as a lot of them. I've never reviewed it before, but someone requested it in my Discord community in the video suggestion channel. So if you guys have any video ideas for me, come over to the Discord community and let me know what kind of videos you want made. Because after making 700 plus videos on VPN, believe it or not, it can be tricky to come up with new ideas sometimes. Anyways guys, if you want to see all my VPN reviews, go ahead and check out VPN tier list. Um, you can find all my rankings there and everything there on the website that you'll need about VPN. If you want to buy my merch, the links will be down in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get into the review. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is Heidster's website. Um, let's go ahead and look at the pricing. You get five simultaneous devices for the price included. Let's go ahead and look at that. Now, it's going to be $10 a month or 46.8 or zero um, for a year, around $4 average. And then six months is $36. Seems to be some kind of sale, but I would wager that it is just this price. So I do think that $46 a year is not that bad. Quite a good deal. $36 for six months is a bit pricey. $10 for one month is also a little tiny bit pricey. I would like to see closer between, uh, I guess, maybe five to eight dollars is you know what my top rated VPNs are for the price. Um, you know, like I said before, five simultaneous connections. You have a couple different payment options here. Coin payments with cryptocurrencies, PayPal, credit cards, but we do not see gift cards or any anonymous payment like that, which is kind of a, a bummer. But overall, not too bad here for the price. Let's go ahead and see what the application looks like now. Okay, guys, so this is Heister's application. And honestly, for a VPN I haven't heard of before, it does kind of have a good amount of settings. We can look at here and we'll do application analysis soon, uh, you know, check marking how many features it has. It's got some cool theming options, um, some cool ability, ability to customize UI, animation, tooltips. You could customize opacity, which is kind of cool. Although it's not really doing anything right now. I think you have to kind of do it like this. Let's see. Whoa, that is, I have never seen that before. And it honestly makes it extremely hard to use where were the settings okay jesus do not mess with the opacity guys do not it was very hard to use um and look you can even change the theme color i think that's just yeah there you go dark and light mode and then we have some more stuff like dns customization allowing you to use all these different kind of dns which is very nice um it has like its own little camo web thing which is kind of like it's obfuscated uh vpn compatibility so if you're in china Perhaps Heidster will work, although it's hard for me to test it there. You also have some ability to block DNS, UDP, and stuff like this. So it seems to be pretty good for observation. Um, it has some network protection here, which is basically the network kill switch. And it has some proxy capabilities as well. So we do have like a little bit of options here between like the camo VPN, which is kind of like stealth VPN and open VPN. Although I would like to see Ike V2 and stuff like WireGuard. So guys, this is the full application analysis showing you what it does and does not have. Honestly, Heinster VPN, not too shabby. It does get a lot of things that a lot of VPNs don't have. Stuff like SOX5 proxy support, obfuscation options for VPN blockage, DNS, port customization, ability to configure while live use so you can switch servers without having to hassle and disconnect. And it even has some options to view some latency and stuff like that on servers, which is quite nice. And you can even search the service as well which is something I kind of like to look for additionally. And you can even sort them by different things. So I honestly, guys, while it is missing some kind of things like WireGuard, IkeV2, and some of these extra features, I do think that Heister VPN has a pretty cool application, especially for one that I haven't ever reviewed or heard of before. I actually kind of like it. One cool thing about the application, I think, is that it has a nice modern appearance. 
that still manages to feel unique. It's got some cool animations and stuff like that to make it feel a little bit modern and flashy. And overall, I do think that the settings and stuff are very well organized. And it's cool to have a couple different options to make the app look the way you want it, whether light or dark mode. And it's also cool to see different options here between the changing the different um, things very easily and very quickly. I, I honestly quite like this application. It would be nice to see a little bit more green here, but that's pretty much my thoughts on it so far. So I connected to the best available location as a sign from the VPN application. Let's go ahead and see what kind of speeds we can get. Now, I just want to say that without VPN on, I get around one gigabyte here. Upload is around 40, ping should be around 15. So, so far, this doesn't look like that good of a speed test. However, as always, we probably will get more accurate representation within the live torrent test downloading uh, Ubuntu um, ISO kind of thing. So yeah, it's just kind of meh. That download speed is very slow. We'll have to see actually what kind of speeds we can get while downloading. There's the final speeds just about there. All right, guys, so here we are connected downloading the torrent. Let's see what kind of speeds we can get. Usually I like to see around 30 to 40 right here in this range for my top tier fastest VPNs. Anything above 40 is blazing fast and mostly kind of reserved for VPNs that are now supporting WireGuard and are fast for torrenting anyways. So far, Heinster VPN doesn't look to be too fast. It kind of went up a little bit from those really low regions, starting to pick up a little bit of speed now, going from around 10 to 14, but nothing too fast. Let's let it run a little bit and see what it can offer. So guys, letting it run a little bit longer, we see that Heidster seems to be kind of stagnating around the 10 to 15 range for um, torrent downloads, megabytes per second. So that's not too fast, honestly quite slow going up a little bit actually to 24 around there, but kind of sticking around, maybe go, going up a little bit now, there was 30, 23. Honestly, it seems to be all over the place. It went up from like 10 to 25, it was at 30 for a second. It definitely seems like it's picking up a little bit of speed. Uh, a little bit inconsistent though, 10 to 30, 31. Hmm, a little tricky here, a little tricky to gosh. So waiting a little bit longer, I do think the more consistent speed range of this torrent um, download is somewhere between 20 to 25, maybe lower 30s. So honestly, picking up a little bit speed, it's not too bad for speed. That speed test was not very impressive, but the download is not half bad, I do have to say. Um, definitely not top tier speeds, a little slower maybe, maybe a little bit better than average perhaps. Overall, it's just kind of okay, I guess. So unfortunately, Heidster does not look to be faring well with streaming providing services. Stuff like Netflix and Hulu are giving me bad proxy errors. And I also couldn't get BBC iPlayer or, um, you know, Prime Video to work either. So that's definitely a little bit of a letdown not to see any streaming support. And even Netflix, the page wouldn't load, which is kind of unusual. At least usually it will give me Netflix originals. With this one, it didn't want to give me anything. Yikers, 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 yikers. So guys, Heister VPN is definitely not a no-log service. It says when using Heister service, they may send diagnostic data to third-party analytics, which is kind of troubling. Um, they will identify this for connection errors and possible bugs. They may also collect your country um, of connection as well as your um, connection times choice of server location, total amount of data, so bandwidth logs. We do not collect traffic data nor browsing activity. Um, so they do collect kind of, you know, the basic kind of logs, connection, bandwidth, and stuff like that. So not too good there. So Heidster VPN is based in Hong Kong, which is a little bit concerning, considering that pretty much Hong Kong has come under the jurisdiction of China in a lot of ways. If you do something in Hong Kong, like criticize the Chinese government, they can ship you straight over to uh, China and put you in jail. So it will be interesting to see VPNs that are based in Hong Kong, VPNs that have offices in Hong Kong. It will be interesting to see what happens or if there's any developments with VPNs moving out of Hong Kong. But as of right now, Heidster VPN, not really too sure about its reputation. 
it's pretty small haven't heard anyone really talk about it haven't really heard any bad news either although i'm not a huge fan of the logging policy or a hong kong based jurisdiction that's for sure So looking on the website, um, Heidster does not have any um, live chat. You can submit support tickets, although the refund policy is a little bit limited at only seven days. So guys, let's go ahead and talk about the final review ratings. So for pricing, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 because the yearly price is not bad. However, six months isn't that good and one month is a little bit more expensive than some of my tier one options that are getting cheaper and cheaper nowadays. Application was pretty good. I had a lot of kind of like anti-censorship kind of tools. Maybe it's kind of more a Chinese oriented VPN, which is kind of concerning because it's based in Hong Kong. But, you know, it did have a lot of cool features and I overall like the intuitive nature of the application and the design I think is pretty good. A lot better than some of them out there and it kind of has a cool look and feel to it and it feels unique. Speeds were just kind of okay. Speed test was horrible, but download rates were fine. Uh, maybe a tiny bit better than average. Reputation, I don't think they collect um, the amount of logs I would want in that I wouldn't want them to collect any logs, but they do collect, you know, bandwidth logs and some connection logs and stuff like that. And overall, I can't really find out too much information about the company. They are based in Hong Kong, but besides that, not really too much known about them. Anyways, guys, for streaming, I couldn't get anything to work, which was very disappointing. And Netflix wouldn't even load and stuff like that, of course. Support actually did give me a refund within like the time it took for me to edit this part and, and yesterday which is very nice. I couldn't give them full points because they don't have live chat, but I did give them a small little boost there. Overall, I think the final score is a tier three VPN, not really recommended for use. 2.58 out of five. Uh, so I don't really think this one's worth using as a whole. Some parts of it are okay, but there are a lot better options out there that you guys can find on tier one options at vpntierless.com. All right, guys, thanks for making it to the end of this review. As always, if you have any video suggestions, come over to our Discord channel. If you want to check out all the reviews, like I said, it's on the website. And I'll see you then on the next one very soon.